everybody welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today I'm going to sew along with you the snowdrop satchel by blue Cala patterns this one here is the small size it does come in two sizes um, both sizes I love um, this one is just so incredibly adorable the set the large one and the small one would make amazing mommy and me bags uh, the small one is perfect for those that don't want to carry too much or you could dress it up and it could be your evening bag or whatever or even a good travel bag let me show you some of the features of this bag i mean travel bag because it's not too big um it's got this really amazing shape it features these side ties which could also be a, ta a tassel on these v rings you can go ahead and attach the optional crossbody strap it just clicks into both of them like so um I just love this zipper panel on top like it's, it's just so incredibly unique and for a small bag it's actually not too bad I have added in my uh, signature uh, decorative zipper pocket as well as a decorative slip pocket in this one yeah it's just a lot of fun it can be made on a domestic machine uh, all depending on what you choose for your materials of course most patterns are domestic machine family based on uh, what your textiles are you are using um, this is a turned bag what else it is not hard to make at all um, yeah in this tutorial I do do things a little bit different um, how I turn the bag is a little different uh, we leave the bottom completely open and then we feel we will um, close it up through the zipper pocket. It just makes, especially when doing a smaller bag like this, it makes it so much easier to turn rather than turning it through a small opening or through just the zipper pocket. So again, we leave the entire bottom open. You'll see what we do there. Um, yeah, this is a class. If you're seeing this now on the public side, we have just completed a class for November, 2022 on the Tuesdays side and we've done a so long class which is eight hours of a live video if you need a slowed down version class on this you can definitely join the membership side again that would be the tuesday and thursday so long tier to see this um and you can catch the replays of all of the past tutorials uh we have done thus far um materials i use in this bag the gray is a bonded leather from galaxy customs this cow print i believe was from van girl fabrics um my hardware is all from emmeline bags my zipper and zipper pulls are from blue cala i use pretty and pink so foam as the main stabilizer that's similar to a palm flex palm by any soft and stable any kind of sewing foam um, i got decable heavy in the bottom all of my cotton pieces i have interfaced with eb fuse light which is a medium woven interfacing so like an sf101 um i did use some edge paint this glitter edge uh, top coat is from tandy leather and the edge paint and that is giardini edge paint uh can get the giardini edge paint from either emmeline bags or fabric impressions if you're looking for canadian sources what else what else um i really do think that's it i can't wait to make this with you guys this is one of my favorite patterns of all time you know how i feel about blue Cala. i love all of celine's patterns thank you so much celine for allowing me to make another tutorial on your amazing patterns but how about we get to it i'll see you guys at the other side you're gonna need some rivets number five zipper tape slider two swivel clasps four rectangular rings four d rings four purse feet a zipper end four strap ends Two number five zipper pulls and your nameplate. You're gonna need a crossbody piece, sew in foam, your four side pieces, two exterior backed with fusible fleece and two lining. Two zipper pocket lining pieces. Two main lining pieces. Your exterior bottom with decoville heavy or peltex outside of the seam allowances. Four zipper panel pieces, two handles, four connector pieces, 
your two ties, uh, your piece for your D-ring connectors, your main front and back panels. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my crossbody strap and my handles off camera. If you need a class for that, it's down below in the description. Okay, so you're going to take your two main lining or main exterior pieces and back them with foam. Uh, you will also do this for the bottom if you're doing the large after you put the, the purse feet on. Okay, so I'm going to do my ties in vinyl. So I have cut mine to one inch by 14 inches. I am just putting a little bit of double sided tape here. You can use clips if you like. I'm going to fold this in half, wrong size together, like so. And then I'm going to take this to the machine and I am going to top stitch down each of those sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done there. So now what I'm going to do is on the sides that have raw edges, I'm going to go ahead and use my edge paint. If you need a class on that, I have that down below in the description. All right, so now we are going to work on our zipper panel. So on the wrong side of my main zipper tape, I'm going to draw a one inch line with a pen that will not remove. On the opposite side, I am going to take each end and fold them down at a 90 degree angle like so and secure with a pin. Do the opposite side, making them as even as possible. And then you're gonna go ahead and baste these in place. Okay, so that is done. I'm just gonna trim up my wings here to match the zipper tape and then you can go ahead and pull these two apart. Now we're going to pull out our zipper panel pieces. We're going to measure in a half inch from each of the short end edges. I'm going to go ahead and use some double sided tape. You can definitely use clips here if you wanted to. Double sided tape definitely makes it a lot easier though. We're going to fold those short ends into that line that we just drawn on both short ends and you'll do this with all four pieces. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to take make sure they're all the same length. Now on my lining piece, I'm going to measure in a quarter inch from the left hand side. Use clips if your machine does not like double sided tape here. From that line onwards, I'm going to apply some of my double sided tape. And then I'm going to take this piece right side up as well as one of my zipper pieces right side up, matching up that curvy end with that quarter of an inch mark. I'm going to take my exterior zipper uh, panel piece. Again, I'm going to use double sided tape. You can use clips. And I'm going to apply, uh, put this on right sides together with that lining piece and that zipper. And then I'm going to sew these together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll do the same with the other side, but the curvy side will be on the right hand side of the lining piece. So I strongly suggest changing into your zipper foot here. It makes it so we get a nice and straight zipper and makes it so we can get a nice even seam allowance here and without um, it going all wonky. So go ahead and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now what we want to do is we want to press these panels right wrong sides together nice and taut away from the zipper teeth. Uh, you can definitely finger press this or if you've used cotton definitely take this to your iron. My Both my pieces are vinyl so I'm going to use uh, some double sided tape to help me get a nice and crisp seam here. So I'm pushing it nice and taut away from the zipper teeth. Flipping it over and doing the same on the other side, bringing those two zipper panels wrong sides together. I'm also going to use some clips to help hold that those bottom raw edges together nice and even. Then we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to baste the raw edges of the bottom and then top stitch the other three sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You
You will do the exact same thing with the other zipper panel. Okay, once those are both done, we just want to make sure that they line up nice and even, which mine do. Next, we want to find the center of the vinyl pieces here, so I'm just folding them in half and making a small snip along the raw edges to mark my centers of these panels. And then once again, I'm just putting the snips together like so to make sure we are definitely even. Okay, so now we're going to work on our front and back connectors for our handles. So I've already drawn a middle line down all four of these connectors. I'm going to use some double-sided tape again. Use uh, clips if you prefer. We're going to fold these long edges down into that center line. And then along those folded edges, we are going to top stitch with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on all four. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take off my zipper foot and put my standard foot back on. And then top stitch these with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So now what we're going to do with these is on the wrong side of one end, we're going to measure down one and a half inches. I'm going to just put a little bit of tape at the top here as I take my rectangular ring, bring it to that line, and then fold the connector wrong size together upon itself like so and secure it with tape. And then I'm going to take a, some more double-sided tape outside of where our one-eighth of an inch top stitch will be when we attach these to the panel. Make sure they're all the same length. And from that folded edge where the rectangular ring is, I'm going to make a mark one inch down. This is going to help guide me when I go to sew these to the main panels. Okay, so now we're going to take our main panels. We're going to find the top and bottom centers. And I am making the small version here once I've made sure those marks are definitely center. I'm going to measure in two inches from the bottom edge, four inches if you're doing the large, but I'm doing the small. I'm going to line my ruler up and use it as a guide where I am going to put my connectors on to make sure that they're nice and straight like so. Stick them down with the double-sided tape. Do the same on the opposite side. And then we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch up each of these connectors with an eighth of an inch seam allowance across that line that we drew just below the rectangular ring and back down the other side for all four connectors on the front and the back. Gonna put a little piece of scrap vinyl in behind my walking foot here just to save my vinyl and my um, my hardware from getting chewed up from my walking foot. It just helps protect it a little bit. Okay, so all four of those are done. As you can see, I went ahead and I installed rivets backed with small scraps of Decaville Heavy as well as put in my nameplate. Okay, so now we're going to work on our tassel or our tie connector. So that's just this one piece here. Very similar to what we did with the other connectors. We are going to draw that center line down the middle, fold the long edges into that center line, but then we are going to top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down each folded side.
Okay, so that is all done. Now we want to cut this into four even pieces. So fold it in half, make a cut, and then take those two pieces, fold them in half, and make a cut. And that should give you four even pieces. Now we're going to take our D-rings. I've put a little bit of tape on the bottom, just like we did with the rectangular rings. We're going to put them on, and we're going to fold them wrong sides together, like so. Now we're going to take our two exterior pieces, so I'm on the small, so I'm going to measure one inch down from the top of each side. If you're doing the large, it'll be one and a half inches. From the raw edges of my D-rings, I'm going to measure in three-eighths of an inch, and then I'm going to put that three-eighths of an inch with the edge of my side piece, one inch down at that mark, using those marks as a guide on each side, like so, and we are going to base those in place. Okay, so that is all done. Okay, so now we are going to work on our purse feet on our bottom. So I've already put in my uh, Decaville Heavy outside of the seam allowances. I'm going to use my pattern piece where I've poked out the holes where the purse feet placement is, mark them, and install my purse feet. If you needed a class on how to do that, it's down below in the description. I also like to use a little bit of duct tape on the prongs just to add a little extra security. Now, from each of the four corners of our bottom piece, we're going to make little 3 8 of an inch squares. And you're also going to do this on the two bottom corners of both of our side pieces. And now we're going to take our main front panel or back panel and we are going to line up our sides Right, our right sides together like so with our main panels and we're going to sew down here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance but stopping at that 3 8 of an inch box that we drew at the bottom of the side panel. We'll do this for both sides. Now I do have my hump jumper handy just in case it's a little bit thick getting over those connectors. So starting at the top, working my way down and stopping at that 3 8 of an inch uh, box that we drew, do not sew over that. Do a back stitch. I'm actually going to go down just to strengthen my seam with another row of stitching an eighth of an inch away from the first row in the seam allowance just to give a little extra strength over that connector. Okay, so that is all done. You can see we did not sew that bottom three eighths. Now we're going to do the same thing, forming a tube when we attach the other main panel to the sides using the exact same process. Match up the raw edges and do not sew past that three eighths of an inch box that we have at the bottom of the side panels. Again, I'm going to go in with another eighth of an inch stitch into the seam allowance just to strengthen my seam a little bit. Okay, so that's all done and we have this tube. Now we are going to have our bottom side up like this. We're going to take our bottom piece, find our centers. And then we're going to put this right sides together with one of the main panels. So I kind of just stick it into the tube like so, match up that center and clip it across. Now where that 3 8 of an inch where we stopped and started, you can see here how we can kind of fold the side panel back so we can match up the main and the bottom piece here nice and even. And then we're going to sew across here starting and stopping at those 3 8 of an inch boxes that we drew on our bottom panels.
Okay, once that's done, now we want to double check that our seams from where we did the sides here and that seam along the bottom match up and that'll guarantee we won't have any holes in those corners. Now you're gonna do the same with the opposite side. Match up those raw edges. Kind of fold that 3 8 side piece out of the way so you can match up the main and the bottom piece. And then once again, go ahead and sew across from the 3 8 box to the 3 8 box with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once again, double check your stitching to make sure you have no gaps in the stitching. Right, yeah, we are going to do these side pieces. So they should fit in nicely. And once again, we are going to go 3 8 to 3 8 um, boxes. Now we are going to just double check that our stitch matches and this is where I like to poke into the corners to make sure there's no holes. And now we can reduce that bulk. We can kind of fold those corners together and just trim up those corners on an angle without cutting into any of the stitches we just made. This is just making it so our corners will have a really nice and sharp edge. Okay, so now we're going to take our zipper panels. We want to make sure we have it going the right way. So I like my zipper to close to the left. So right now I'm working and putting this, um, both of these are right side up, my main front panel and my main zipper panel. So my little curvy side is closing to the left here. And I mashed up our centers and I'm going to go ahead and clip the zipper panel to the main panel. Do the same with the opposite side, matching up that center. Again, these are right sides together, sorry. Uh, the zippers are not right side up. The zipper is wrong, right, wrong side up. So our zipper panel and our main panels are right sides together. Then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to baste these in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm just double checking that they match up and they are center and we are good. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So once again, our zipper panel and our main panels are right sides together. See, so once that is done, you can go ahead and you can turn this right side out as our exterior is complete. And what I like to do is I just like to install my zipper on here just to make sure everything is nice and straight and lining up once I have it all turned out and all of my corners poked out. I'm very happy with how my corners turned out. So now comes into play where we drew those lines on the back of the zipper tape. So when you put your pull on, as long as that line matches up, your zipper pull is straight and it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and take that zipper pull off now. All right, so I already went ahead and I did my lining pieces with the pockets. I do them a little different than the pattern. If you want a class for those, they're down below in the description. 
So we're going to take our lining side pieces. It's a little different than the front and you can see how these side pieces line up for that diagonal line on our lining pieces. Go ahead and sew just along there with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're not sewing that very bottom section of our lining piece, just where the sides and the lining match up. You're going to do the same with the other lining main panel, forming a tube very similar to what we did with the exterior. Now we are going to do this a little different than the pattern, and we are going to leave the bottom completely open for now, and we will be closing that up once we are all done with the bag. It makes it really easy to turn with this uh, hack that I am going to do, um, especially when you're working with a bag that is as small as this small snowdrop. Okay, so there we go. So again, we have the bottom open. Now we're gonna take our exterior and put it into our lining right sides together. Make sure you have them orientated properly. Match up the lining and the exterior main panel centers. Clip in place. And then the other side. And then match up the side seams of the exterior and the lining panels. I like to push my seams in this one towards the side panel because there's less bulk in the side panel. And go ahead and clip this all the way around. Okay, so now that that's done, if I was on a flatbed, I would sew this from the inside. If you're on a cylinder arm like me or have a free arm, definitely do it the way I'm doing it. And we are going to go ahead and sew these together with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that that's done, I'm just going to double check everything was caught and I'm okay. Now you can go ahead and pull the bag through the bottom. See how easy that is, leaving it completely open. I'm going to just double check the strength of that seam, make sure everything was caught and there's no holes. Once it looks good, go ahead and push the lining inside the bag. And we're going to go ahead and finger press all of these seams on the sides. I'm actually going to use clips to help keep my seams nice and taut like this. Along the zipper panel, it's a little harder, so I'm just going to give it a really good finger press and uh, make sure everything is where it needs to be when we go to top stitch this. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and top stitch all along here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
so that is done. Now we're gonna go ahead and close up the bottom. So that opening we left in the zipper pocket, we're gonna reach in through that and we're gonna pull the entire bottom lining piece through here. And we are gonna close the lining piece as per the instructions, but through the zipper pocket. So first off, we're gonna match up that long bottom edge. We're not gonna worry about the box corners just yet. Clip that long edge in place. And once we have that done, we are going to go ahead and we are going to sew across this bottom straight edge with a half inch seam allowance. So now it's time to box those corners. So this does feel a little bit awkward, but trust me, it just is so good being able to turn the bag that easy. So that seam we just sewn along the bottom, we want to match that seam with the center of our side lining pieces. Like so. Clip that in place. Do the same with the other side, and then we're going to sew across those two box corners with a half inch seam allowance as well. So that's all done. Go ahead and stuff that in through the zipper pocket. Make sure there's no holes in the bottom and looks awesome. And then you can go ahead, turn in your raw edges of your zipper pocket and top stitch that closed. Once that is done, stuff the zipper pocket back in. Now at this point, you're going to go ahead and install your uh, zipper pull, your zipper end and your straps. So I've done all of that and now we are going to install our ties. I've already done one here, so this is what we're trying to achieve. So this you kind of have to play with a little bit until you get the perfect placement. So you wanna bring your D-rings together like so, so the side panels are gonna fold in. You're gonna take your tie and you're gonna loop it around like this, cross it over like so, and then we are going to rivet those in place. So make sure you have it pulled nice and tight how you want it to go um, to your preference. Once you have the placement good, go ahead and cut your rivet hole. My placement's not quite right. Let me try this again. And take your time with this to make sure you get it right. Then I'm gonna punch my hole through both layers and install that rivet. And then to put your crossbody strap on, you just hook it through those two D-rings like so. Make sure everything looks good. Admire your work. It's so cute. 
And then we're done. All right, that's it. That's all. What do you guys think of that? It's it's actually not a hard sew. It's not a long sew. You can do this pretty fast, minimal pieces to cut out. I don't know. I just love it. So if you like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you would like to join one of my sew along classes, that's an option for you. All of that information on how to join is down below in the description. If you'd like to uh, support my channel further, I also you could also buy me a coffee. That's down in the description. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.